New World Witchery is a Patreon-supported podcast. This episode is supported by listener Mark. Mark, we thank you for your ongoing support, and we will gladly be eating a plate full of cabbage, black-eyed peas, grapes, and fireworks in your honor to grant you New Year's luck. If you'd like to become a patron and help support the show while also getting some great perks, please visit www.patreon.com slash newworldwitchery where you can pledge a dollar a month or whatever you can afford to help us buy the necessary antacids for all those fireworks and cabbage. And thanks to all of our listeners. Are you looking for magic? Maybe magic that lives right where you do? If so, join us aboard our broomsticks and ride with us from the Atlantic to the Pacific, from the Yukon to the Yucatan, and find magic that's right outside your front door or just off of Route 66. Whether you're in the Windy City or the Crescent City, the city that never sleeps or the city of brotherly love, we've got enchantment for you. I'm Corey. And I'm Lane. And this is New World Witchery. This time around, I'm exhausted. But that's okay, because we'll be discussing the idea of a witch's rest. Hello, and Happy New Year, Lane. <laughs> Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. Or should say Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year again. <laughs> yes, Happy New Year <laughs> again, because we were not recording before. We got about 30 minutes into it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we were. We were. Trekking right along, I had already gotten into the main topic, and I was like, this is weird. Why does it feel like this is not recording? And I looked, and it was not recording. But now we are recording. Now we are. I'm so glad you noticed. You're not kidding. Uh, that's crazy. See, uh, we need a rest. We do need a rest. We are clearly very tired people. Yes, um, but before we get into the main topic, we do have some housekeeping that we want to talk about. So yes. let's do that first. Mm -hmm. The first one was we wanted to apologize for some unintentional, but still there, trans exclusionary language in our Other Worlds episode, which was the last one of the year of 2022. And it was, it, we were talking about like something with reproduc reproductive rights or re reproduction of some sort. It was towards the end of the episode. If you do want to go look for it for some reason, I don't know. Sometimes when people like apologize for things, I'm like, oh, was there drama? And I have to go find mm -hmm. it. So <laughs> that's where that is. But we did want to say that it was unintentional, but still hurtful to some people. And we do apologize. You know, trans rights are human rights. And um, we will be more careful about it going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we are very much we, we you know, have a lot of trans folks who are friends who are, are very close to us, who we love very dearly. And we were very thankful that we had a few of them who, particularly on our discord, popped up and said, hey, did you all realize that you did this, um, that you kind of spoke in this way. And we really hadn't. It is, it's never an intentional thing, obviously, but we know that it that doesn't necessarily, you know, make it better. Excuse either. it. Right, right. 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 Yeah. Better. And it was uh, definitely so we, like a, a kind calling out, you know, there was no, it was simply just like, hey, this, this kind of hurt my feelings. And we were like, yeah. dang it, we didn't want to do, you know, we don't ever want to hurt our awesome listeners. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we, we very much love all of our supporters and listeners. Unless you're hate listening. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you happen to be a Nazi or a horrifying bigot <laughs> of some kind. In which case, uh, I think in our previous version of this, Lane, we, you, you said fuck off. Was that? Yes. Yes. Summer, exactly. Summarizes correctly. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yes. Fuck Nazis off. fuck off. Nazis fuck off. Uh, all else. <laughs> we love you. But, but yes. Yeah, so it was definitely, it was definitely something that was, an, it was an oversight on our part. And we, we should say we oftentimes deal with older sources when we're doing research for this. And sometimes those will have gender essentialist things as a component of the the folklore that we're kind of sharing or presenting or bringing forward. We oftentimes will, you know, try to then sort of reframe that or think about that from a, a non-gender essentialist or gender fluid or gender open kind of perspective and, and incorporate those ideas. Sometimes we miss that. We are both um, cis people. And because of that, you know, we have blinders on about certain things and we appreciate people who can say, hey, you missed this thing mm -hmm. and, and help us to, to be better about that yep. in the future. So definitely thank you for, for pointing that out. And we are sorry for for saying things in, in a way that made people feel excluded or hurt in any way. That's never our intention. Absolutely. So we apologize. But we, and but and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the correct <laughs> conjunction there. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and and still, still we love and you. And so. still. Um, yeah. 
Um, other housekeeping stuff you may notice in this episode, we're not going to have the card readings that we had been doing in last year's episodes because those episodes had started stretching on to an hour and a half plus, which is just too long. It's just so long for an episode. So we're what we're doing is since we were already doing card readings of a sort in the Folk Magician's Notebook, we're just transferring this idea into the Folk Magician's Notebook. So we will be pulling cards for each other every month and giving our interpretations as a part of the Folk Magician's Notebook so that people can still hear about the different cards, learn about the different cards, but hear them actually used in more of a practical context. So. Yeah, so we'll be reading for each other, and I'll mm-hmm. be contributing a little bit more and helping you yeah. out with the Folk Magician's Notebook. More. So I'll be, you know, like a little bit more present in that as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited for that. And yeah, just be on the lookout for that. So the card readings will not be in these like main episodes anymore. Yes. So those are, those are many. Yeah, the Folk Magician's Notebook was an experiment that I kind of launched last year. It just kind of on a whim in some ways. I mm-hmm. sort of had a plan for it in my head, and I was like, well, this sounds like fun. And I did it and I really enjoyed it for the, the year, but it, we do really want to have stuff that it's both of us, right? This is, this is, this is our show. So, so we want it to have something where we can have kind of both of us present in it. And so the Folk Magician's Notebook is now going to be more collaborative. And then to that end, we were doing a lot of kind of like testing stuff out and beta testing ideas last year. And we've got something else that we're going to be doing this year that's kind of tied into that. Yeah, we have transcripts now. Mm-hmm. Which is so exciting. I remember years ago, someone, you know, messaged us and asked if we had them and we had to say, no, we're sorry, because, you know, it was a lot of like resources and time that we didn't have at that time. But now we do. And, you know, progr- certain programs for that has come a- have come a long way. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's exciting. I'm very excited. And I should say we're going to have them for every episode um, going forward from you know 2023 on, including the Folk Magician's, Magician's Notebooks. They have been available for all of our Patreon supporters. And that's not that was not a like, let's put them behind a paywall for, you know, only the special people. <laughs> Although our Patreon supporters <laughs> are special people. Um, but it was more of a we wanted to test out this process because. It involves a lot of machine transcription with me coming back and editing afterwards. And I wanted to make sure that the transcripts were at least decent using that process. So we did that for a year. We will make all those transcripts available for everybody going forward. So be, you know, on the lookout for that. I'll be posting stuff on the website to kind of lead people to that. And then we should have some older episodes being transcribed as well. We've been in touch with somebody who has offered to 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 do this for us we're gonna hopefully hire them to do some of these older episode transcripts as well and start bringing those to the table too uh but that yes. may be a little slower of a process because we have literally 200 <laughs> <previous episodes laughs> right. to get through 200 numbered episodes i should say prior to that not including yes. the, the non-numbered that's right yeah because we've been doing this for a while indeed so it's a lot but we want to make these these shows more accessible for folks who you know you know, maybe have audio processing concerns and and want to have a, a transcript of some kind available while they're listening or who just like to get, be able to go back and kind of look at what was said after the fact so they can kind of jog their memory. And if you just like to have transcripts at all, it's, you know, just something to make it a little bit better for, for everybody. So, yeah, very cool. So, yeah. So, okay. yeah, after all that housekeeping, I need a rest. <laughs> you do. You do. And it's great because it's the perfect time of year for that. <laughs> and the perfect topic for us to open up 2023, this concept of the witch's rest. Yeah. yeah. Which we have um, taken for, not taken. Um, <laughs> no, we t- straight up snatched it. <laughs> <laughs> we stole it from a wonderful book by Christine Grace called, what is it? Witch at the for- Forest's Edge. Mm-hmm. The Witch at the Forest's Edge, which was one okay. of our book club selections from last year that we read with our, our supporters. Um, and I and I happen to know Christine Grace pretty well. We're we're friends. Uh, I did the forward for that book as well, and so I've known about this concept for a while. I've actually lived this concept for years and years and years. It really is since I've gotten deeper into folk magic. I've always taken a certain period of time of the year as a time when I sort of step away from doing magic. And I thought maybe I would read just a little bit from Christine's book to give people an idea, kind of a definition of what this witch's rest is. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Groovy. All right. So this is in Witches the Force Edge in her section on the green and local craft. She says, Witches Rest. In addition to Sabbaths and Moons, we honor the concept of the Witches Rest. Some consider the rest period to be from Samhain to winter solstice, ending when the sun begins its gradual ascent. 
This model prioritizes solar cycles and symbolism. Meanwhile, others may focus on the period from midwinter to Candlemas or Imolk as the rest, because that tends to be the coldest time of the year with the least evident life outdoors. She talks a little bit about how it varies in different places, including the Southern Hemisphere, and then says, either way, finding your rest offers a dark, quiet, reflective time, a time of the void and the underworld. Rest is a time to sink in and recharge. We see this practice as a reflection of and a way of syncing with the world around and inside us. So I love that. I love that's a good kind of overview of this. Thank you, Christine, for giving definition and and terminology to this concept, which I think is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've talked before on the show about these periods when we're not actively doing magic or witchcraft, but we've mostly talked about something we would call a cold spell. And I, I don't know, for you, do you feel like these are different things? I do. I feel like there's intentionality behind it. There's mm-hmm. like... I, I intentionally kind of choose to take a a break versus a cold spell feels more motivated by like maybe mental stress or even physical stress of just saying like, okay, you're, you're burnt out. So it's, it's a difference mm-hmm. between being burnt out and just recognizing that your battery is low and wanting to kind of, you know, find some way to recharge it. Mm, so, so the witch's rest then is a proactive choice as opposed to a I, reactive response. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, that's kind of how I view it. I mean, do you see it in a different way? No, I like that. I think that's okay. very accurate because a cold spell, a cold spell to me does feel like th- that burnout component is often there or, or, I mean, I think you could have a cold spell where you feel disconnected from the magic, even without burnout, just because you know, other things have to take priority in your life. It doesn't mean that the magic isn't there. It just means that it's not the thing that you can focus on at the time, right. but it's almost always a reactive thing. Right. Right. So, whereas you can make the choice to take a section of your, your calendar and say, this is a rest period. This is a period where I'm going to intentionally abstain from a certain amount of my spiritual or magical practice specifically so that I can, I can really feel recharged and rejuvenated. And, you know, I use this, you know, not just, you know, my witch's rest is usually this period from, as she was saying, basically from old Christmas slash epiphany on January 6th to early February. But there's also, it's also really funny because we also tend to have kind of a a rest period for us podcast wise in July. (laughs) We do. And that's just always been the way our Mm -hmm. schedule has worked out. But yeah, it it definitely. So I do feel like the the witch's rest is usually in the winter for me. It's almost like a hibernation kind of Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. I just want to go into my metaphorical cave and bundle up and all that. But yeah, sometimes I do need it in like the, you know, just the dog days of summer where they're yeah. just, just so hot and bleh and you know my disability my, not disability that's the wrong word I just hate saying like my disease that always sounds awful mm-hmm. my condition I don't know whatever I really cannot handle heat it's mm-hmm. like one of the comorbidities is called Uthoff syndrome and yeah I just get really it, it's not good so I have a hard time with intense heat, especially here in the South. Um, so yeah, I, July is kind of perfect for me for just taking a rest and because I just don't feel like doing anything, you know, mm-hmm. except laying under a fan. <laughs> yeah. That kind of reminds me years ago, Velma Nightshade would talk about either on her show with fire, firelight and slushed on, um, or on her own show, she would talk about how in the summer she basically would retreat to her basement, <laughs> just mm-hmm. like be totally in shade and shadow in her basement. And that was just how she could survive the heat of summer. And oftentimes it would be this kind of thing where like your, your her magical practice would be a little more limited at that time. And that's true for me, too. It's if it is incredibly hot out. I don't I don't feel like stirring up a whole lot of magic because I don't feel like doing much of anything. Frankly, right. So. Right. So. Both of those time periods work for me as a, as a rest period. And funnily enough, they're kind of six months apart, which, mm-hmm. is, which is neat. It is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do you want to get into some like kind of folklore, maybe historical examples? 
Sure. Yeah. So this isn't just a new concept, right? This is not, it can seem a little bit like, oh, this is, a, you know, we, we hear the word self-care thrown around a lot and there's mm -hmm. validity to that. But it's also worth remembering that like this idea of taking some time out from magic or, or specifically having times that magic is limited is not a new concept. This is something we should, we see in folklore and historical observances, various sort of religious observances as well. One example that I talk about in my book, New World Witchery, a person who I highlight named Mother Mercedes Peña Lane, who was known as the New Moon Curandera. She, she practiced curanderismo, or curanderismo uh, which is a Mexican, Mexican-American folk healing tradition that involves magic and herbalism and a couple of other things as well. But very specifically, she only could work for the two weeks around the new moon. And that was the only time that her power was effective. And so for the other two weeks of the month, basically, she couldn't. She wouldn't be able to to do the same kind of work. And so she was basically having a, you know, she would not have identified with the term witch necessarily, but she was having kind of a magical rest period for half of each month, right? So she had half a month where she was very effective and half a month where she sort of had to sit it out and recharge that battery. Mm. So that's one good example. That is the, the first one I thought of was Lent and, you know, not to make it seem too like, oh, you have to deny yourself type of thing, because I don't I don't necessarily like the guilt that can come along with Lent. I know that some people find it very, you know, therapeutic mm -hmm. to, to do that, you know, to give something up and then come back to it if they want to or kind of figure out, oh, I can live without this. So, you know, that's that's great. But anyway, that was just the first one that, that came to my mind was Lent. Sure. And Lent has its roots in a lot of pre-Christian traditions. You know, Christianity gave it a lot of its sort of specific form with the sort of 40 days before Easter, et cetera. But, and, you know, setting it right after, you know, the carnival season and Mardi Gras and all that. But there were, you know, Roman festivals. Um, you know, Saturnalia would happen in kind of mid to late December. That was kind of a wild time. There was the Lupercalia, which is in February, which involved, that's actually where we get the word February. The February were these leather strips cut from animal hides where you would, you know, whip yourself or whip other people as a way of sort of purifying them during this, this festival. And it wasn't like you were like beating them senseless or anything like that. <laughs> this was, you know, lightly like swatting at them, which is something that still occurs, funnily enough, in parts of Europe. There are traditions where during the Easter celebrations, people will use like willow branches to do that. As a I remember years ago, someone wrote in and like told us about that, I think. Yeah, I had yeah. never heard of it before. And I was like, no way. And then we looked it up and, you know, it's kind of saw more about it. I don't know. It's so funny. I just remember that learning yeah, about yeah. that for the first time. No, I observed that while I lived in Prague. They had that. Mm. Like you could buy the willow, the woven willow wands and stuff like that that they used. So so yeah, so there is this this period of time. And it, weirdly enough, it happens, right? In this kind of like early winter, midwinter period where where you have this kind of rest period. And funnily enough, there's also the Dia Inferni, which are these days of devoted to the underworld gods, which are also sort of coincidental to this too in the Roman calendar, which I think, you know. Your witch's rest, this underworld void contact period. That makes sense. You know, I, it I think does. That makes sense. So, yeah. Let's see. So another one that gets brought up a lot is the idea of there are limitations that people who are menstruating can do. Limitations on kind of the things that they can do because of magical reasons. And this isn't quite a witch's rest, but it is an interesting kind of limitation <laughs> that, that goes along with this because there's a magical influence. So, for example, people who are menstruating and Pennsylvania German culture, they're not supposed to make sauerkraut, right? Because it will go bad, right? Or they're not supposed to can things because the can the canned goods will get botulism or spoil in some way. Oh, so botulism. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I should say, I don't think botulism is specifically cited because I don't think they use that term, but like it will spoil, right? It'll go off. Right. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. So, and I mean, that's something, I mean, they're even you know, the sections of the Old Testament in the Bible where they talk about you separate people out while they're menstruating. There's a novel called The Red Tent by Anita Diamond that talks all about this. You put people who are menstruating into this separate tent because otherwise the things they touch become impure and unclean. And there's unclean. a lot of problematic stuff with that. But there's also of something course. kind of cool about like, you know, the idea of, yes, when you were having 
your menstrual period, right? That you get separated from society, you know. I wish, bro. <laughs> well, you write this whole thing where like you can go and like you're kind of there with other people who are menstruating and like there's almost kind of a coven thing happening there, which it, is kind of yes, cool. Yes, I could say that. Like now I definitely wouldn't want to force anyone into it if they wouldn't want it but man like sometimes i'm just in so much pain i just feel awful i just want to lay down so yeah i i get it right and like the idea of like being able to just scream you know (laughs) just let out a feral yawp you know (laughs) of some kind (laughs) i get that like i mean i don't get it personally i should i should say like that's that's me usurping my place there but i think it's a no really that's you being empathetic idea. i appreciate it yeah no i just think it's an interest it's such a such an interesting idea and again i agree with you not enforcing that on people i think that's that's where it goes too far but i think the right. idea of like making that available as an opportunity is is a cool idea so yes yes so what's, what's um, something else what else can we talk about i found one little bit of lore that i thought was really interesting where again new moons get associated with this sort of, sort of stuff where either new moons are really particularly powerful or their their void period. So there was a, a trature, which is a Louisiana folk healer named Pop Cliff. And he felt that there were limitations on the healing treatments he could do during a new moon period. So during that that little period of you know three days or so around the new moon, particularly skin treatments. He said they would still work, but they were never as effective. There was a limitation on them. So that was a period where he would, you know, abstain from doing some of those treatments. Interesting. Yeah. Which I think makes sense. I mean, do you, do, when you think of the new moon, like what kind of stuff do you do during new moon work? Yeah, lots of kind of preparing or mm-hmm. maybe uh, banishing type of thing. Yeah, getting rid of. It's it's definitely not a, a manifesting time for me personally. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. And for me, it's a lot of like divination. Like that's a lot of what mm. I spend the time around the new moon doing is divination, which makes sense. Again, that kind of like connect in ancestors, spirits that help you making, you know, forming those relationships, but not necessarily actively sending magic out to do things. It's just trying to listen better during that period. Right. I think that's really good. This, this is probably a bigger thing and we'll actually have a guest on to talk about this at some point in the next couple of months but the idea of like the sabbats or the rites um the the sort of periods of time when witches are supposed to go and gather and do their do their dances and be on the mountains and like all that kind of stuff you know you like when you picture that what what comes to mind for you oh big bonfires Mm -hmm. maybe maybe some like fire leaping type of things Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah, that's that's very much kind of how I picture. It's very night on Bald Mountain, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and oftentimes there is sort of like, oh, there's the devil there, or there's a witch master there, or somebody that's like sort of leading the whole thing. But interestingly, like in a lot of the folklore about it, because they are attending these sabbats, they're not actually outcasting spells, right? They're not right. actually outdoing the sort of witchcraft that you, you normally associate with, which is, and in fact, what they're doing is a lot of times learning new spells or acquiring new tools. So uh, there's some Southern Appalachian lore that talks about witches going to these meetings and they would, this is where they would get what were called the witch balls, right? These little balls of wax and hair that they mm-hmm. could use to cast their spells. And they had to account for those, how many they had used and how many they still had. Oh. Um, or they could be beaten, you know, by the, and then most, the, most of the lore is the devil, right? But, you know, whoever, you know, is in charge of their coven right yeah and they could get new tools they could get new tools made if they needed new new witch balls they could have them made at that time or they could get new imps or familiars during these these meetings and stuff too so Mm. which i think is pretty neat and that shows up you know it shows up in a lot of different lore in some cases these are monthly gatherings a lot of like european lore hungary hungarian spanish english lore talks about monthly But some lore, like the Appalachian lore, really it's only a couple times a year, you know, three or four times a year that they'll meet, Mm -hmm. So, which fits more with the witch's rest, I think. So to kind of bring that into the modern day, so these, if you were to take a witch's rest, one good thing to do might be to craft some tools for yourself, you know, or to kind of go through and take inventory of, of what you have, you know, like, okay, I need... I'm really low on black candles. This is not to be too much of a stereotype, but it's true. <laughs> and right. then, you know, I, I might need uh, some 
jasmine incense or you know just kind of take inventory what you have and maybe stock up if you if you feel like you need to yeah no i love that and i mean and the flip side of that is also the learning right this is a mm-hmm. learning period where you can spend the time absorbing new information so this might be the time you know if you've acquired a stack of books on witchcraft and, and magic and folklore and things like that this would be the time to kind of work your way through those and make notes and, and all that but not necessarily go out and start practicing the spells because you need the time to sort of discern and absorb the information I and mean, there's no demand on you to go out and immediately start using these it's just sort of building up that repertoire sort of internally right. which i think that's a really good way to use that mm-hmm. So uh, fasting is another thing that can happen during this time period. Um, Lent is, uh, like you mentioned, is a good version of that. Ramadan in Islamic calendars kind of functions this way, too. It was a purification time. I think there's a Tal Shav, I think, is the one of the Jewish days of fasting. I may have that wrong. Please correct me if I am wrong on that. I don't know, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, anybody who's listening, I, I was no, I know. <laughs> your, your command of ancient Hebrew fails you, Lane. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's just, you know, but using fasting as a time of sort of reflection and personal purification. That's the other side of this is like that purification side of this, too. Mm-hmm. So fasting, baths, things like that, which can feel like you're doing magic. So I guess it may not be a rest, but if it's if it's very, very sort of like light purification just sort of letting you know letting yourself slowly reset i I think that maybe that would work i don't know what do you think yeah no i I like i like the idea of purification of just sort of it's it's almost like a for the january time it it does work for the new year you know because it's like you're Mm -hmm. you're leaving behind the old or maybe washing it off of you or <laughs> burning it with fire however you tend to go about that <laughs> <laughs> Get it <to> fire. <laughs> sorry i turned into like plankton there for a second <laughs> but yeah so i i like the idea of a purification yeah yeah so i mean i think you know turning it into those kind of like i hate to call them softer practices because that makes it sound like they're they're not as important but they are very important that's the whole thing that we're i think trying to say with this which is rest concept is that you need a time period where you can be more internally focused and more reflective and it doesn't have to be you know a chunk of the calendar like a whole month for some people it's going to be you know the new moon and that's your Mm -hmm. which is rest you use that new moon every month as your sort of which is rest where you're just sort of quietly introspective, doing some di- light divination, and that's it, right? Or you're doing a little bit of purification, but that's kind of, that's it. And you're not going to actively cast spells, so to speak. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm trying to think if there's yeah. anything else on the sort of historical folklore side. There's a, there's a lot of discussion about kind of times that you abstain from certain things. But, you know, within witchcraft, where, you know, where does that fall? That gets yeah. a, little, a little dicier. So... And so we've talked a little bit about the times of year that we rest, right? So early winter and mid mid to late summer for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that was kind of yours as well, right? Yes. Are there other, like, do you set aside any other times for rest throughout the year? Set set aside intentionally, no, but they do tend to happen, which I do think, like we said at the, the top of the show, that tends to fall into more like cold spell type of things. But... I really do think that it's, it's worth seeing like, okay, I'm in a cold spell. How can I kind of use that to my advantage? You know, I don't feel like doing any sort of magic right now because maybe I feel burnt out. How can I take care of myself spiritually? And like you said, you know, with the purification thing, maybe you take like just a really nice bath (laughs) or Mm -hmm. or something along those lines. It doesn't have to be this big thing that that happens for like you said for a month or whatever you know i like that i really love your point about if you can recognize you're in a cold spell and you know that this thing the witch's rest exists you might be able to transition from cold spell into a witch's rest and make it a more intentional practice at that point and i think that's Mm -hmm. a really valuable thing to do i think so too because i i feel like a lot of a lot of witches get into 
intense periods of study and kind of devouring everything they can because it is not a mainstream religion. We don't hear about it all the time. So mm-hmm. once we figure out that we're into it, we're like really into it, right? right. At least that's that's usually been the case for me. And so I, I I think it's totally fine to have periods of burnout as well and recognizing that that's just part of it and and yeah, learning how to how to deal with that. I feel like if I'd if I'd done that years ago when I was complaining about cold spells, you know, that would affect me for a long time, I feel like it, and I just would have coped with it better. Mm-hmm. Go figure. Having coping tools helps you. <laughs> right, right. I know it's funny. It's funny how that kind of overlaps, right? This this idea right. of like if you just if you just have the the language and the tools for it, suddenly it becomes a lot easier to talk about and deal with. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do love this, this idea of you see like, oh, this rest period has, has, has to happen. If I'm in a cold spell, okay, well, let's just make this the rest period because it doesn't have to, you don't have to, like, it is great to set aside this time intentionally and really give yourself that intentional battery recharge. I think that's a very healthy thing to do. But if for some reason you've gotten caught up in an unhealthy pattern, you can, you can then sort of see like, oh, I'm at this burnout point. You know what? it's time for which is rest and give yourself that intentionally as opposed to sort of just letting yourself burn out into, into doing nothing at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the flip side of that is to be careful not to say, Oh, I'm going to turn it into which is rest and then burn yourself out more because you're putting pressure on yourself. Yes. That is so true. Yeah. Recognize that the rest (laughs) is valid and the rest does not mean you have to do much of anything that you can intentionally set this time aside and say, I'm going to wait until I feel that witchcraft need and pull again. And until then, I'm just going to kind of be in an absorbing phase and that's okay. I'm going to be in a kind of restive, passive phase with this. And and Mm -hmm. that I think works pretty well. Yeah, I agree. Do you, do you during a witch's rest or during, well, we'll just go with the witch's rest. Do you, do any kind of spiritual work during the witch's rest other than sort of introspection or I guess Um, we said purification, but like are there things that you maintain practices that you keep doing? No, no, because I don't have any like ones that I do, you know, every single day or or Mm -hmm. anything like that. Like I'm not as regimented, I guess about things like that. But when I'm, when I'm feeling that way, one of the main things that I tend to is, is still divination with mostly, you know, Mm -hmm. cards. Like I'm not one Mm -hmm. to, do like tea leaf readings or anything like that but yeah card readings mostly for me still kind of help me feel connected Mm -hmm. but it's not so much of a an obligation I feel like sometimes like I'm able to kind of pull out my cards you know I I shuffle it's a very tactile experience and then I can put them away I love that yeah yeah because it maintains that open dialogue with you know whatever it is that you see is on the other side of the cards whether that's sort of yourself or your sort of mm-hmm. witchy witchy identity or a spirit that you're in contact with like it still maintains the conversation you know it's it's the sort of like check in right it's the text yeah. check in with your friends and say like yeah. i'm okay it's fine i'm still here it's just yeah. i'm kind of crazy right now yes exactly yeah. no i like that I, I dig that a lot yeah and i generally do maintain you know ancestral practices and things like that where I'll sort of make my weekly prayers and offerings to ancestors and spirits that I kind of do regularly. And that's really for me what it is. I'll, I'll do some card divination, but that's, that's about the max I can get done during that rest period. Mm-hmm. So, and that's fine. I, I actually really like that. I like that. Like the whole thing is bounded by like the epiphany holiday at the beginning. And then what we'd sort of think of sort of candlemas at the end of it. So it's a one month period almost for, for this kind of winter period where I'm like, I got no holidays. I have to actually do anything. <laughs> I don't have to like be, you know, preparing somebody's feast. I don't have to be like, you know, doing the stuff to the doors or cleaning the house at this point. I can just let this period be a period of, of rest, which I, I really like. I enjoy that. I'm sure <laughs> you're, you're a busy man. I do. I do stay busy. I do stay busy. <laughs> um, uh, one thing we didn't talk about, but it's interesting is this idea of like, you know, this, the, which is rest that sort of gets for, forced upon you, so to speak, which is eclipses. Cause there's a lot of people who have very strong beliefs that you shouldn't work during an eclipse. And I don't know, is that something that you connect with at all? No, I do not. I, I love the idea of working during eclipse during mm-hmm. an eclipse. There we go. <laughs> and 
I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I just feel like there's, uh, I, cause I've done a working during an eclipse. Mm-hmm. It was, it, to me, it just feels crazy powerful. Like it just, it, there's something about it connecting with the, the energy of it. And maybe it's, it's too chaotic or intense for, for some people. And that's totally fine. I'm not saying I'm better or worse because of it, but I just, I really enjoyed the power that I felt from it. Mm-hmm. And I think I would, even if I were just kind of a like non-magical type of person, if I was just outside during it, I mean, there's a reason people kind of, flock to places that are you know gonna show the eclipse very clearly and you know like they there was so much traffic i remember the the last full eclipse Mm -hmm. uh just that entire day it was just crazy but i kind of lost my train of thought i'm sorry i do that no that's fine i mean you're basically saying for you it doesn't it doesn't feel like a witch's rest it actually feels the opposite right it feels like a sort of like supercharge for the battery yeah 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 yeah. there we go or like a power surge of some sort yes definitely but but so what about you like how do how does that feel for you i don't necessarily use it in any kind of witchcraft capacity i you know but i do feel the power surge thing i like i feel like i'm like i want to i want to participate in it i just don't necessarily turn it into a magical thing most of the time Mm -hmm. so so yeah it doesn't doesn't necessarily work as a witch's rest for me which i think is is interesting you know but 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 if it does if it does work for you that way if that's something that you are out there practicing you're like you know what i if an eclipse is coming i'm just not going to do anything that's valid too there are cultures that take opposite views on these things and that's perfectly okay you don't have to there's not like one right answer for all this if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work for you there are people who work with astrology who are going to find like the void times like where planetary planets are basically in kind of void of course mo- motion where they're not mm-hmm. actually transitioning through different signs and yeah. that will be your your rest time all of that is perfectly okay whatever you yeah do. i mean it's a it's a meme now at this point but mercury mm-hmm. in retrograde is yeah most people do that for sure a, a time for some people yeah yeah and there's like four to eight of those every year so if you want to use those periods as your, which is rest, there's no reason not to, especially if Mercury is very important to you and your work. So, right. Yeah. It's a, it's a communications planet, right? I mean, among so many other things, but sure. Yeah. That's one. <laughs> I just, when Mercury goes retrograde, that's one thing I notice as a kind of communication breakdown mm-hmm. with a lot of things sometimes. So I try to remember that and, and be mindful of it. So yeah, I, I definitely think that could be a, a time of rest for some people. For sure. Yeah. And maybe, you know, if you're more connected, like if you're, you know, an Aries or you're more connected to kind of martial energies, maybe Mm -hmm. you look for the Mars, the Mars void or the Mars retrograde as your, your rest period. All of that would work. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be seasonal based on kind of what's going on in your sort of bioregion. It could have to do, it could have to do with kind of your personal clock, right? You know, maybe there's a time of day that you need to be your witch's rest. Or you just mm. need that as a recharge period. I think that might be a little too narrow for me to, to see the value in it. But I, I, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. So, right. We are not going to knock that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, in all of this, I, you know, I think it's fun to highlight this and bring up the idea of the witch's rest again. Christine Grace, thank you for putting into words this idea. I would love to hear other people's rest practices what do they do you know it's funny to be like what are your rest practices (laughs) well i close my eyes i have a sleep mask (laughs) right like i use blackout blinds that's it i am taking melatonin so (laughs) but but yeah so what is it that people you know do people observe this which is rest do people feel feel this is a thing that's important to their practice and how does that manifest because it's not something i really hear talked about a ton anywhere else so I'd love to know about that. Mm-hmm. Same. I don't really hear it talked about much either. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's it's weird because I feel like when I do talk to people about this, people are like, oh, yeah, there's definitely this time of period, this time of year that I don't like to to do witchy stuff or that doesn't feel particularly witchy. But it's not usually framed as this like, well, that's the time I rest. But I'd love to know if it is, if, if, other, if other people do this. So mm-hmm. cool. Um, well, yeah, then I think what we'll do is we'll break and we'll pop back in with a listener email great all right you want to read this one sure 
Okay, this is from listener T. Let's see, a Patreon question and a story. The question, as a Patreon member, when will I receive the Cardamancy book? Very excited. And then the story. Our family witch story from deep in the hills, Tennessee. I guess, Tennessee? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it says TNN. I wasn't, I just wanted to be sure. Okay. The story goes, there was an old woman in the holler. Everyone knew was a witch. She lived by herself and was responsible for cattle dying. She had some dispute with my grandmother's father, who was the local doctor and would treat many for free during the depression. Whole neighborhoods showing up outside on his lawn Saturday morning, having walked for hours. Wow. Anyway, the dispute was over either land or payment of debts. I can't remember, but I guess my land, or excuse me. But my guess was land as he was charitable with his medical care. Anyways, when my grandmother's mother was washing dishes, she looked out of the window above the sink at the family's clothesline in the yard. She watched as the old woman came from the forest, crossed the clearing to their yard, went to the clothesline. She began messing with their clothes, and my great-grandmother was convinced she was stealing their clothes as times were hard and many were living very rough and still do. She ran outside yelling at the old woman who had already made it to the forest edge somehow and skittered away. She checked the clothesline and all were intact, nothing amiss, except on the bib of the great grandfather's overalls were a series of very neat straight pins aligned in a pattern. Some were facing up, some were facing down in no discernible order. She brushed it off as a crazy lady and went about her life. A week later, great grand great grandfather was dead in his 40s of botulism from improperly canned foods. The story goes his stomach ballooned out in an almost comical way, and it was a painful death. Was it really botulism or the witch's curse? Hmm. Mm. Interesting. I know. Okay. I'm going to tackle that question at the top first, the Cardamancy book. If you are a Patreon supporter of ours, I usually send those out about two to three times a year, the, the 54 Devils. So those usually come out after you've been a patron supporter for six months or so. So if you haven't gotten it after, you know, seven or eight months, send, send us a message because you may have been missed somehow. But but yeah, that's that's when you get it. Story, such a good story, such mm-hmm. a horrifying story, but like yeah. what an interesting story, right? Yes. I I don't even know where to start with that. Have you ever heard anything (laughs) like that? Sure. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. This is not, this is not an unusual, it it is unusual in that it's so specific and so great. It's such a, such a, such a rich detail in this. It's not unusual for there to be something where there is a land dispute. Somebody shows up on somebody else's property, take something or leave something on that property. And then the person who occupies that property then starts to suffer from Mysterious ailments. This is the whole thing behind the Bell Witch in, in a lot of ways. I was right? just thinking about the Bell Witch. Yes. Yeah, for sure. The pins make sense. Uh, pins pins are something that can be used to transfer magic because they they penetrate, right? So they 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 use to sort of prick or or insert magic into certain places. We see them used in like witch bottles and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of protection mm-hmm. in the in the the idea of a witch bottle, but mm-hmm. but yeah, it's also offensively this time absolutely yeah and you do have yeah. people who will pin stuff to other people as a as a way of you know spreading a magical charm of some sort mm-hmm. and there are people who like pin charms inside of their clothes and things like that too so the pins facing different directions that's something that's a little new and i really want to kind of dig into that i think that's really interesting me too like i, I want I to know more about that yeah it's like what <laughs> Was it, was it really just her sticking them in as quickly as she could and and just getting it done? Or was it like, okay, you know, this one goes down to, to face the underworld and this one goes up, you know, like I'm just trying to think of something Mm -hmm. like how a witch, kind of a witch would think of it. But yeah, that's, that's my question, I guess. Yeah. To me, it sounds like what she was doing was basically pinning up his intestines that she was creating creating kind of a witch bottle within within him so that the inside of his body would become you know jagged and sharp and painful mm-hmm. and so like as food tried to make its way through it would get caught and, and do these horrible things which you know botulism is kind of that right like it's this you know d- this bacteria that then spread and infect somebody and and make them very, very sick. And that's basically what happened was she sort of pinned up his ability to get rid of this illness Mm -hmm. and it swells him up like a balloon. They said, which is a pair. I mean, I I feel so bad for this guy because that is a painful way to go. And he obviously was very important in the community Did doctor work for free, which, you know, (laughs) 
It's just another reason to have healthcare available for everybody, but that's okay. It's a whole other, whole other thing to get into. But, you know, it does make me sad. And, and a lot of times we'll find like, you know, when witches are casting spells like this in these kind of community stories, there is another side to it where like she has been wrong in some way. Like maybe he didn't provide her care for some reason or um, this land there, you know, she may not have much in terms of land. She may need some additional land to be able to survive or something like that. I don't know. But there's oftentimes that kind of a thing going on. We don't have that clearly present in the story, though, which is is, is important. Like mm-hmm. she just didn't like him. <laughs> yeah. So. And then the clothes, obviously, clothes are very frequently used to, to transmit magic and folk magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you use clothes and uh, like other people's clothes in your folk magic at all or your clothes? Uh, I feel like my clothes I have. I, I don't know that I've used anyone else's, but that doesn't mean I'm not open to it. I definitely would. Yeah. Yeah. You should like, you should, I mean, you know, just start experimenting, cut people's, you know, cut little bits of your, your husband's clothes and <laughs> see what you can do to it. <laughs> also real quick. I feel like that, that wood was really Southern. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would. Sure. Sorry, Reckon okay. I would. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really cool. And I've definitely used clothing for, Basically, I use them to make like cloth doll charms type things or like wrap wrap charms in people's clothes and things like that, because sometimes that will add that extra bit of connection. So mm. it's like using hair. Yeah. Like everybody worries. They're like, oh, make sure that you don't let Corey get your hair out of your hairbrush. Then they'll just leave their sock drawers, leaving just ride it wide open. I don't know. <laughs> people make, people make choices, I guess. Dialogue. I'm not getting invited anywhere <laughs> at all ever again, which is fine. <laughs> I will always invite you places. Permanent witch's rest. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you will always invite me places, and I don't steal your hair or clothes that you know of, so that works out well. So. That you know of. <laughs> I, love how you, I love how you work that in there. <laughs> always a caveat. Tell you what I am excited to do. Um, you and I are going to go witchy shopping at some point yes. soon. And that's I'm exciting. So excited. Yeah, we're doing that for the, the upcoming like, Patreon Big, mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you call it? The, I just, I just call it the it's big like box. It's like a bonus box. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> the big box for the, the top tier supporters. So we're going to do some shopping for that. I'm excited about that. <laughs> Me Because we live close to each other now, and that's great. Yay! We got to um, take advantage of it. Yep. Which means we've got places to go, people to see witchcraft yes. to do. So we're going to start wrapping it up. I should say, we, we we're off and on about doing this question of the episode, but it's January. I'm going to ask you, are you making any resolutions this year? What are they? If not, why not? Oh, I'm not against them. Mm-hmm. I I like to wh- one thing I noticed in like the bullet journaling community, which I have like kind of dabbled in, is creating or not creating, but figuring out a word of the year that applies to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. One creator I saw, she used greater this time, which I thought was fun because you know she was like I could have. I was thinking growth. I was thinking maybe cultivate, but none of those really fit because yes, it can. It, you know, she, as she was going through her, her kind of reasoning for all this, but she was saying greater can mean, you know, growing bigger, but also growing better. And Mm. so I I liked that idea. So I do like to kind of choose a word to focus on. And I I haven't chosen one yet, but I will. And I'm trying to remember my word from last year. If I, if I picked one, but what what about you? What, how are, how are you as alluding this year? (laughs) Oh, am I resoluting? Uh, I'm resolving English major friend of mine <laughs> to do. It was funny because like the word of the year, I kind of originally was approaching this as a like, no, my word of the year is no. <laughs> which, okay. Which would make sense. I love that. <laughs> it does make sense. But really what it came down to is no to the, 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 the the stuff that I have been doing and not to say that I'm not going to do any of it. I'm, I'm always perpetually busy, but sort of being very reasonable and saying like, I cannot feasibly accomplish certain things. And I'm, I need to say no to, to certain opportunities, even if they seem like good ones. So I'm, I'm being more practical about that. I'm setting very realistic. I had somebody contact me the other day about illustrations and stuff like that. And I was like, look, I don't have time to do that until X point in the year. If that's not going to work for you, I'm happy to give you a reference for somebody else. Whereas Previously, it might have been much more likely that I would have been like, sure, I can do it. Let me try. <laughs> yeah. So and let me stress myself out, but, but I'll make it work. Yes, I understand. Yeah. 
So I'm kind of backing in, backing into that and saying like, no is, is a big part of it. But the other side of it is I want to be doing more community work, like the stuff that sort of feeds my soul. Like I used to do a lot of like Habitat for Humanity builds and stuff like that. And I want to get back into doing that stuff. So that's the stuff I want to say yes to. So it's just a matter of reshaping the priorities where, where the no's go and where the yeses go in the calendar year. So I like that a lot. Good for you. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. And the other thing, and this is something I actually started before the new year, but I have been trying to be better about it, is saying yes to social engagements because I have been really bad about that the past six to eight years where I don't say yes all the time when people are like, hey, do you want to go do this fun thing? And I'm like, no, I really have to get this and this and this done. But to now just be able to say Yes, it is more important that you and I go witchy shop hopping and having fun. Mm -hmm. It's more important that I go to a friend's birthday party coming up. It's more important that I, you know, take the time if somebody says, you know, hey, do you want to go out and grab, you know, a beer or something like that? Yeah, let's do that. Because the social stuff is stuff I put on the back burner for the better part of a decade in order to accomplish the sort of like, not career, but, you know, that kind of stuff, right? The stuff that's just sort of the busy stuff. And so I need to, I need to have some, some better t- time for that. And I'm going to be doing that more this year. I hope so. Yes. I, I, I like that. And now that I know that I'm like, Hmm, come over and, and just, just unclog my chimney. <laughs> <I'm> like that. <laughs> I'll just, I'll, I'll come in my little chimney sweep outfit. Yep. That sounded Chimney. weird. I'm sorry. Chimney. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like a little, like what a kind little, uh, weird you know. kink do you have? <laughs> Why are you watching Mary Poppins? I know what you're doing now. That just made it so much weirder. <laughs> All right. It's time to go now. It is time to go now. Um, if you have thoughts on this episode, if you want to share your experiences with Witches Rest, we'd love to hear that. If your thoughts on the cool listener story we heard, if you have resolutions you want to share with us, we'd love to hear those. Please feel free to write to us compass and key at gmail.com or new world witchery podcast at gmail.com both of those will reach us mm-hmm. there's oh, i don't even know there's the website mm-hmm. witchery.com um we have another podcast that we don't often mm-hmm. talk about but i, I want to throw it up uh, right here and just say we have also have one way to talk about fee we go through episode by episode it's completely spoiler heavy so if you have already watched it and you're looking for someone to just you know kind of metaphorically chat with come over and chat with us it's myth taken buffy the vampire slayer podcast i think it's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun yeah we have a good time with it mm-hmm. um and if you're looking for more folklore type stuff we have another podcast kind of under our umbrella called chasing foxfire which looks at intersections of folklore were things like medicine history science literature things like that it's yeah. infrequent i put out new episodes every about every year or so i'll put a, a small season of them out so there's there's been a couple of seasons so far and if people are interested they can check that out too chasing foxfire.com if you want to find us on social media we're on a lot of different stuff the best way to find us though is newworldwitchery.com slash find hyphen us that will have pretty much all of our all of our social media locations has, you know, upcoming events and stuff like that too. So there's lots of, lots of ways to, to track us down that way. Not, not track us down. <laughs> like, please don't like hunt us for sport, but <laughs> the most dangerous game. Most games. <laughs> no, we're really not very dangerous. I would twist my ankle and be like, just shoot me. I'm fine. (laughs) I accept my fate. (laughs) Yeah, you're like, that street cat over there is far more feral than either. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, you can find us through that as well. And I think that's about it in terms of catching up with us in different places online. If you want to reach us by phone, we still, at least for now, have a phone number, 442-999-4824. That's 442-99-WITCH. You can leave us a voicemail there. We like getting those and, and yeah. hearing what you have to say. So, Yeah, it is a Google number, right? Which they yeah. so they said they're going to be kind of phasing out. So, Yeah, I don't know how long it'll take for them to do that. But so long as they let us have it, we'll, we'll keep using it. So, yep. yep. I think that'll do it. Lane, thank you so much. Happy New Year. So glad to be doing the show again this year with you. 
same here. What year is this, by the way, that we're late? We're getting into? Is we started in 2010. So this is a, as we finish up this year, it'll be like 13 to 14. You're 13 right. to year 14. So, but that's not to be uh, a cliche, great. but 13 is my number. I love it. It is very lucky. Very. So that's exciting. Okay. Well, cool. I'm very excited for the year ahead and for spending it with you, Corey, and you, the listeners. And yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's going to be it for us this time around. So thanks for listening. Be well. New World Witchery is a production of New World Witchery Podcasts and is released under a Creative Commons share and share alike license. The title and closing music for this episode is Woman Blues by Paul Afgernos, licensed from AudioSocket. Socket.